Hi, my name is Miklos Ratz, and I'll be talking about joint work with Sebastian Bubek, Ronan Aldan, and Akanan Mosel, who is my PhD advisor. So the basic question we're trying to understand is if you have some kind of randomly growing graph, and you look at it at some large time, what can you say about it far back in time? So what can you say about, for instance, where it came from? So we're going to look at this question in a very simple setting of trees, because that's um, simply because it's simpler. So we're going to look at randomly growing trees where you add a, a new vertex at each time step, and you connect to an, ex an existing vertex according to some distribution. The, perhaps the two most natural things to look at are preferential attachment and uniform attachment. And so you can start these tree growth processes or any kind of random grass growing process from any kind of initial seed. And the question is, does this have an influence of how the graph looks at, look like at a large time? So here you can start from a star, or you can also start from a path. And you can see realizations of the preferential attachment process and the uniform attachment process with uh, 500 nodes. And you can see the rep this, these kind of have a star shape, these kind of have a path shape. So you can see remnants of the initial seed in these larger trees. And of course, these only have 500 nodes. So we, you expect the remnants of the seeds to still be there. And the question is, will, will, this, will this persist? Will you see this even at larger times? And there are various ways to measure, formalize this question and measure the influence of the seed. So in some senses, the seed does not have an influence locally, but there's a global measure in which these different trees do look different. So one thing you can do is you can look at two different seeds, look at the realizations of, the, of your random tree at n nodes, and then look at, so these live on the same space of, of uh, n node trees, which are unlabeled. So you can look at the total variation distance between these two random measures induced by the two different seeds. And so this total variation, you can look at the limit of the total variation distance as the size of the tree goes to infinity. And this limit exists because this total variation distance is not increasing and not negative. And the question is, is this positive or is this zero in the limit? So the main results are that indeed this limiting total variation distance is positive in both the preferential attachment and uniform attachment models. So the main conclusion is that every seed has an influence both in preferential attachment and uniform attachment. So the basic heuristics of why this is true is that for preferential attachment, you can look at the maximum degree and related statistics, which will show, you, you could expect that if you start from a star, then the, a large star, then the central vertex of the star will have a large degree to begin with, and this will persist even at large times. So you can see the effect of the seed in the maximum degree and related statistics. So this is exactly what we do. Whereas for uniform attachment, the degrees don't matter, but instead you can look at other kind of global balanceness conditions. So th this is basically the intuition behind these results. And there are many open questions and further directions uh, going forward. So you can look at the same question for uh, other type of uh, uh, graph, your favorite type of graph, randomly growing graphs. Um, an important question is that of estimation. So essentially what we looked at here is a hypothesis testing question. And it's very important to look at, so suppose you only observe this network, what can you say about it? So basically our work says that you will be able to say something interesting, but the, the exact way of, of answering the question of estimation is a more harder question. And there are various other questions that could be interesting. For instance, what is the effect of extra information? What is the effect of noise? What is the effect of an adversary that maybe will, would try to manipulate uh, what you see? And there could be very interesting applications of this as well. So I think I'll finish there. Thanks.